friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. Tonight we're talking about the man who saved the world. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Wednesday. How are you, my friend? Man, I am doing great. Doing All right. Great. Well, we're off to a short week here, and you know, we were discussing before the show, I think we're going to have a few short weeks here over the next few weeks. Not short. We're just going to do two shows instead of three, so we'll see how... We'll see how that works out for everyone over the next couple weeks. This week, it was that we had Labor Day on Monday, so that's our excuse. But uh, next <laughs> week, it's and the following week, it's just that the material we're going to be presenting is so intense that I think it, it's better to space it out a little farther. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, give our audience a chance to take it in and, uh, and recover, right? <laughs> that's right. Digest. Soak it in a little. Think about it. <laughs> it's your turn, folks. You you got to you got to think about it and then and then come back to us. So uh, actually, it's just a very busy schedule that I'm yeah. up against over the next few weeks. So we're gonna we're gonna lighten up the number of shows, but we're gonna be just as committed to bringing you the good stuff. And here we've got really good stuff for this edition. The man who saved the world. This is a person we've talked about before, Stanislav Petrov, and he has passed away. He died at age 77. Let me just share a little bit from this story about him. It was on the NPR website. Stanislav Petrov was a lieutenant colonel in the Soviet Union's air defense forces, and his job was to monitor his country's satellite system, which was looking for any possible nuclear weapons launches by the United States. He was on the overnight shift in the early morning hours of September 26, 1983, when the computers sounded an alarm indicating that the U.S. had launched five nuclear-armed intercontinental balloons missiles. All I had to do was reach for the phone to raise the direct line to our top commanders, but I couldn't move. I felt like I was sitting on a hot frying pan. This is Petrov talking here. After several nerve-jangling minutes, Petrov didn't send the computer warning to his superiors. He checked to see if there had been a computer malfunction. He had guessed correctly, and then him quoted again, 23 minutes later, I realized that nothing had happened. Of course, had he pushed the news upstairs, it's entirely possible that the counter-strike would have already been underway by the time they realized they'd made a mistake. And then there would have been no turning back. We would have been... That's, that's a tough one even to think about. I don't mean to make light of it, but uh, if there's ever a uh, confirmation of the entire message of the movie War Games, here it is, right? That, that was the scenario they were talking about at the beginning of the movie War Games, that the orders would come through in test and people wouldn't push the button. Now, that was fictional, and we didn't know if it was true or not, but it turns out in the real world, at least this one time, that really did happen. Maybe it happened more right. than that. Who knows? We, we, can't, we can't say for sure. I, I wonder if maybe it didn't play out several times during the course of the Cold War on both sides. And this is the one we know about. And if there might have been two or three more instances where somebody got what they considered to be the order and they didn't pass it on or got the order and they didn't hit the button. If well, you know, did, it's, it's exactly this reason that they put in a hotline between uh, you know, the White House desk and, and the Kremlin, right? So that uh, if something like this were to come up, uh, before you launch, why don't you pick up the phone? Maybe you can get from the leader of the other country, maybe just in their tone, you can get a reading as to whether or not they've launched on you. That was in the this instance, anyway. the, the best case for that line probably would have been the reverse of Dr. Strangelove, right, with the American has yeah. to call the Soviet and say, you know what, we've launched, but it was a mistake and we're sorry, so please don't strike back, right? That's awful scene in uh, Dr. Strangelove, right? This would have been the opposite, right? right. The Soviets calling the Americans, <gasps> you know, we got this intelligence and turns out the war's not really happening, so please don't strike back even though we're hitting you because the, the thing about an ICBM is once it's on its way, it's on its way. Once you make that decision, you've, you've made that decision. So that may be the closest we ever came to a nuclear war. Second closest, probably Cuban Missile Crisis. And yeah. it's interesting that Petrov who we've talked about on the show before, probably has not gotten the attention he deserved, has gotten a bit more attention over the years, so that's good. I'm glad to see that. But right. his passing went unnoted. Somebody right. wanted to wish him a happy birthday, so they were tracking him down to wish him a happy birthday and found out that he died, and then that's how the, the news got back to the media. So this man who potentially, through his inaction, saved the world, passed in obscurity, just as his actions might very well have gone down in obscurity had the story never come out. And I think he probably would have been fine with that based on everything yeah. <laughs> everything he had to say about it. He didn't feel that he had really done that much. He didn't think he was a hero. He just kind of felt like he was, he was doing his job and maybe not terribly well. In fact, he got dressed down for not passing word on, even though right. it, it turns out that he was right not to. So it's one of those little ironies of the, the catch-22 yeah, yeah. situation that comes up in the bureaucratic mindset from time to time. But I don't know. Should there be a holiday in honor of Petrov? What do you think? 
I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things, Phil, that I, I think it would not be a bad idea. Let's let's say that you're having diplomats from Russia visit visit Washington, D.C. I think it'd be a fine time for a president, you know, whatever president that turns out to be on, at some point, unveil a statue of this guy, you know, yeah. in, in, the, in D.C. And uh, an outdoor statue of a, a Soviet military officer in, in Washington, D.C. I hope that it would be taken well by whatever Russian diplomats uh, or you know, political leaders uh, were, were to see it, but they should. You had a man of honor who did the right thing, and therefore the whole world is infinitely better off, right? Absolutely. Well, and, and the thing is, in a sense, he represents the fact that the Cold War went about as well as it could have. Maybe, I mean, it could have been a lot better, I suppose, but it could have been a lot worse. A whole lot worse, yes. And what he did, even if there weren't other people like him in that position who played that scenario out, although I think maybe there were, but, but even if there weren't, ultimately that's what the two great superpowers did too, right? They held their yeah. hand. They didn't strike. They didn't implement what, you know, we even use the term, the nuclear option, right? It never happened. Right. And well, it turns out here. mutually assured destruction actually worked. And all it takes is one madman for it not to. Uh, you had people like Khrushchev that banging that podium with his shoe. And I mean, he, he certainly played the part well of a madman. And I think in many ways he was, but even he had pause, right? I'm not really interested in destroying my own com- uh, country, uh, even to even to destroy uh, th- this country that I hate so much. The, you know, the song is true. They, uh, the Russians, they, they love their kids too. It, it yeah. would have taken just one madman to bring it all down. It took right. one good man to keep it from collapsing, right? That's the That's thing. Right. One, the, one decent this person making the right decision, and we're all still here. So, right. Uh, Spasiba Bolshoi, as they say. Thank you very much, Comrade Petrov. We appreciate you not acting on that and, and allowing us all to be here still. And, <laughs> you know, might be a little bit of proof that humans are a bit smarter than we sometimes suspect when it comes to preserving our own existence. Maybe we're, we got a lot of flaws. We do a lot of crazy things. We do a lot of bad things, but there's something about this species that decides to keep going. And on a mass basis and on an individual basis, maybe we're, maybe we're smarter than we give ourselves credit for. What do you think? I hope you're right. You know, it's interesting. It was something about the weather that day or something that was, it was the way the sun was shining caused a reflection that made the computers think that it was incoming ICDMs. There was some interesting weather phenomenon or something. That's why that, that's what caused that error. And, of course, they immediately corrected for it. Uh, when they, they, they saw that false positive come up, they corrected their system after that. And uh, Yeah, that's and, a system uh, we, you just can't afford producing false positives at all. Yes, you just cannot. I'm hopeful that was the only instance like that that, that, that occurred because I think they fixed their system after that. But There you go. Wow. Well, you know, for yeah. sure, our computer systems have gotten way better since the 80s. So we've, <laughs> yeah. we, we've improved on those grounds. And ultimately, human decency won out in this instance. Makes me hopeful that it might continue to do so. Okay, well, that's it for this edition of The World Transformed. We're going to be back on Friday with a brand new show. Great talking with you, Stephen. Great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see it. 